Hi, this is Randall here in Texas. And I'm Matt here in Michigan. Today, Randall and I are continuing our summer movie series, and today we're talking about the movie that many people say kicked off the summer blockbusters. We're talking about Jaws. The 1975 film was directed by Steven Spielberg and stars Roy Scheider, Robert Shaw, and Richard Dreyfuss. This is a story, or I should say a movie, about a small island community that is preparing for the busy summer 4th of July holiday when a shark starts attacking some of the swimmers there. So, Randall, this is the big summer blockbuster, the first, Jaws. What do you think about Jaws? So... Chiefly, I love Jaws, and I don't think that you're going to find very many people that don't love Jaws that have actually seen it. Uh, um, granted, Jaws 15. No, no, there's not that many sequels. <laughs> but um, this this is a this is a super character driven movie, and if you've watched our channel for a bit or you've gotten to know us a little bit, I love a character driven film. It's not so much about whether it's a horror film or whether it's supposed to be serious which it is a it is a serious film like you'd mentioned during our tremors review uh but it's all about this community and their reactions and each character is pretty well fleshed out even the little characters like the chief brody's wife which is rice schneider's wife and the mayor he becomes his own character and the shark is his own character you know <laughs> it's it's all very driven instead of the story it's all driven by the characters that's what makes jaws so good and then you have the action on top of it oh yeah yep i agree uh and you know to talk about you know the shark or whatever this is a monster movie and for me i think this is my favorite monster movie too just because it is so well done you know from the acting you know directing you know steven Spielberg. Um, even like the music, you know, you have iconic John Williams doing the scores and stuff like this. And that's the thing too, the Jaws theme itself is, you know, legendary itself, just just the song. You know, people immediately hear that and they, you know, they connect it to Jaws. It's just, it's just iconic. This movie is ridiculously quotable too. Um, I I wonder how many quotes come out of this movie, specifically like, you're going to need a bigger boat. You're going to need a bigger boat. And how many people don't even know or don't connect it back to the to this film? Like, no, this movie is just, it's just quotable, quotable, quotable again and again. It's, it is, it's iconic. The, the, the theme is iconic. The John Williams theme is iconic. This is the, really the first breakout piece for little known director Steven Spielberg, you know? What's he ever going to do? <laughs> and it, it's really kind of slow. It starts off a little slow. And then you have the, you know, the, the scenes where the all of the people are trying to get the shark and then they get a shark, but it's definitely not the right shark. And and the the bulk of the movie really gets going when our three main protagonists all get on, you know, their boat and they go out and go really hunting this. And that's when Robert Shaw shows up and 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 things get really crazy at that point and you get one of one of my favorite cinematic scenes <laughs> um with them just all sitting in the boat and they're just telling their stories. And, it, you know, it's an escalation. Like, I got this one from a thresher shark. Well, I got this one from that. And then he tells a story about the woman who broke his heart. And he goes, it's right here. You know, and he's beating at his chest. This is the scar. You can't see it. <laughs> um, this great character, like, back and forth. This great script. There's There's so little wrong with this movie. I guess that's the point that I really want to get to. Like... Really, this film encapsulates what good filmmaking is about. Oh, yeah, I agree. 
we were talking too earlier about how this is you know more of a serious movie but also when we have those three characters together those are when we have some of our least serious moments too so some of the actual humor that we find in this movie is during those scenes but you know even in the scene that you're talking about them comparing scars and everything yeah i mean just the three of them together like if you just take those scenes that could really be a movie all in its own too of just them going on this this boat ride or whatever you want to say this fishing trip you know to hunt this great white shark yeah it's, it's funny you think about that even if you take all of the other stuff out yeah like that's the that's the heart and soul of this film is these three and their interactions with each other um and that scene that i was talking about there where they are comparing all their scars and they're having a good time and they're laughing and it, it turns on a dime twice so there's the scene where all of a sudden He's like, oh, you know, what's that tattoo? And he's like, oh, that's the USS Indianapolis. And Shaw, or not Shaw, Robert Shaw is the, the character. Um, Quinn is who he plays. Um, dang it. What's Richard Dreyfuss' character's name? Hooper. Um, Hooper, thank you. So Hooper, he knows. He knows exactly what happened with USS Indianapolis. But Chief Brody, Roy Schneider's character, he doesn't. So he's like, he doesn't get like why that's a, a sore spot. So they're having all this fun and they're and they're just joshing back and forth with each other, only for it to turn like really, really serious and talking about all of the terribleness that happened with the, the USS Indianapolis and and the sharks coming after the bodies in the water. And then again it gets to lightheartedness and then they're they're singing and they're, you know, drunk and everything, and then the shark you know, Bruce the shark starts attacking attacking the boat and it's back to serious. Like it, it turns on a dime where it's like, oh, it's all lighthearted and it is great and and then there's like this really cold, serious moment, and then they're back to being lighthearted and it's great, and then there's another really cold, serious moment. Yeah, this movie flows real well with the different tones of like the serious kind of or the calm parts or, you know, the funny parts or stuff in this movie, it does really transition real well between those. One thing I want to keep going on with the characters, I think part of the reason these characters um, are so good is because they're so different. They're so different from each other. You know, they have such, you know, different backgrounds and everything too. You, we have, you know, Brody, the, the police chief or whatever. He is a former New York uh, police officer who's now moved to this small town to try to, you know, get away from all the bustle of the city and stuff. And then, you know, you have, you know, Quint, who, who's, you know, a scientist mm. who's got, you know, a lot of money and stuff. No, 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 that's Hooper. <laughs> Quint is <laughs> Quint. <laughs> See? Oh, sorry. There you go. <laughs> go back. And then we got Quint, who's this, you know, he's the blue collar person who you know is the fisherman former military you know he's he's seen some stuff and then you know we have hooper hooper he's this you know rich you know scientist you know i you know on on, on paid for this boat i love you know, i love himself. that part it's earlier in the film when they go out on this boat and and uh chief brody's like well, what are you rich and he's like well yeah <laughs> <laughs> what, hooper's how, just like how rich? And is like, well, me or the whole family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Like that, that dichotomy, the difference between, between these different class of, of people and, and how they interact in this film. And, and you get the interaction that you expect to get. You get the interaction out of, uh, out of Hooper of someone who is a scientist of someone who, who, who want, who would rather not kill the shark. He, he's like, Whoa, wait a minute. Look at this thing. This is amazing. Versus Quint, who's just this, uh, you know, gritty old sea, sea shanty kind of captain versus kind of just the white collar police officer and their reactions, therefore. And he just wants to protect his community. It's it's an amazing dynamic. You put all these things. It's, it works in multiple films. It's not like it's just Jaws. It's that mishmash of characters coming together um for example deep space nine if i'm talking star trek oh i get star trek again <laughs> i know gotta stick it in there <laughs> i gotta stick <laughs> is there is there a, a little bit of a spot where i could put star trek in <laughs> insert it here insert it here <laughs> well but you know like in previous star trek ins you know uh incarnations like deep like uh tng 
the characters are all Starfleet for the most part, so they just all meld together. You put a whole bunch of characters in Deep Space Nine together who who are from different backgrounds and doing different things and see, you know, see those interactions and that's similar to what you get in Jaws. You know, they're they're definitely different from one another and that difference helps drive the movie. Oh yeah, even before we get on the boat, you just talk about conflicting, you know, ideologies and stuff. I mean, you go with you know, stick, you know, with Officer Brody. I mean, when the when the first shark attack happens, the first his first instinct is, you know, to protect everyone. What do I do to protect everyone? Let's close the beaches and stuff. And immediately, you know, some of the town leaders and stuff, you know, kind of go like, hey, you know, you've only been here a year. We don't think you really understand the town. This town really needs to be open for 4th of July because that's where we make all of our money and stuff. This town doesn't run without the beaches being open on 4th of July. So are, are we sure this is a shark attack? And that was something kind of interesting too is like the corner is actually there too and the corner's kind of like changes things. It's like, well, now I'm opening it up to other possibilities. Maybe it was a shark attack and you know brody kind of like pushes them on that like you'll you'll stand by that decision and you know the coroner was kind of like yes and it and it's fun because he's like listen i'm just i'm just reacting to what i was told you know he told he tells me it's a shark attack so the logical thing to do is close the beaches and now if he's telling me that it's not a shark attack okay you know as long as you're willing to stand by that you, you know but as fate would have it, they've already put the call into the <laughs> to the right people, and Hooper's already on his way, and he can come come in and and chide that corner. He goes, "This was no propeller accident," and you know it. <laughs> well, th- you know that's the big thing too, because this is a you know small community. This is part of the reason you know, why Brody moved here. They haven't had a murder in 25 years. This community isn't used to, like, seeing anything, like shark attacks kind of thing. This is new to them. They No one here is, like, shark experts. So, like you said, it was really important that they brought Hooper over so that he could basically point out to people as, like, you know, you guys are just, you know, brushing it off because you guys really don't know. You don't have experience with this kind of a thing this you know what you you think you're dealing with and what you're actually dealing with are two different things and i I would go to mention so there's a not that ghostbusters 2016 is a fantastic film (laughs) but there's a scene in there that my wife and i we always joke about where where she's like you don't want to be the mayor and from jaws (laughs) never compare me to the mayor from jaws (laughs) you know and i'm like that's one of those jokes that actually works super well, even in the context of a not necessarily great film like Ghostbusters 2016, but it works because it's it's based on such an iconic film as Jaws and the mayor in Jaws just doing all making all the wrong moves, you know. Well, that's that's the thing too. They have the first shark attack, and that he's the, the kind of the one that's kind of spearheading the whole like, well, maybe it wasn't a shark attack. And then they actually have a shark attack, and they announce the closure of the beaches, and he's like, well, only for twenty four hours, only for twenty four hours. And Brody's like, I didn't, I didn't agree to that kind of thing. And then even after the next um, shark attack, you know, on the beach or whatever, where even the mayor's own kids were on the beach as well. He's still trying to think of, you know, things in his mind to justify, you know, basically keep saying it's like, you know, everything I've done is what I believe has been in the best interest of the town, of the town. And, you know, there's there, you see him like nervous stuff. He's got like the cigarette, you know, trying to go into his mouth. And Brody has there like, hey, you need to sign these forms so we can, we can do this, you know, the right way and stuff. And even then he's like kind of resistant and stuff to it kind of thing. Like you see him kind of like pause. He's running stuff in his mind, trying to come up, to a way to justify keeping the beaches open, not just to Brody, but also to himself. Yeah, and I, I think there's a good line in here where Brody was basically just like, there won't be anybody coming to our beaches if there's, you know, if the news gets out that we're just a, you know, shark feeding ground, basically. So we have to take care of this. It doesn't matter if the beaches are open at that point. See, that was one thing that was interesting, too, that I kind of noticed with, with, like, the mayor is when after the first two shark attacks and they still had the beach open after they 
killed what was a large shark but end up not being the you know the bruce the monster shark how you know he's being interviewed by someone there and stuff too and even though it is has been reported that there was a shark attack and stuff too he is still on 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 tv saying well you know not necessarily that people died but yeah there were some bathers that were injured by a shark which we killed kind of thing but as you see you know change subject the the, the, you know, beaches are open. the beaches are open, you know, and reveal means friendship kind of thing. Completely yeah. changed the topic. Changed yeah. the narrative. <laughs> before before we get overly long about such a, a fantastic film, there is one other thing that I definitely just want to talk about. And it's the adversity that the filmmakers faced making this movie. So Bruce the Mechanical Shark, the salt water just played havoc with him. It was just absolutely terrible. Sit like filming sit, you know, out on real water they didn't do this in a tub they went out and actually filmed this you know on on the ocean it, and it's just the things that the actors had to go through the things that the film the crews had to go to the you know the malfunction with the cameras and the, the, the shark but it ended up being one of those scenarios like star wars where less is more we're like, all right, we have to find a way. We have to work through all of these production problems so that we can make the film at time. So so how do we do this, even though that our shark's not working? How do we do this? And you don't see that much of the shark. You just – it's it's more of this silent thing. You see – mostly you see barrels. You know, like, oh, the barrels are representative of the shark, you know? So there's a, there's a lot in this movie – that is just in here because they had no other choice. There was another way they wanted to do it, but they didn't have the technology of the time to do it. And it's better for it. It's better that they had to fight to get their vision on screen in some, some culpable way than having the shark just be everywhere, which is like Jaws 2 and Jaws 3, you know? <laughs> now the shark is everywhere and you can always see him. And I'm like, well, it was, it was more scary when you couldn't see him. When he wasn't that big of a, you know, on-screen presence. It was all in your mind. Well, and I think that was a kind of a big thing, too, which made this such a good, like, monster movie and stuff that you, you couldn't talk. It takes something that we look and enjoy, you know, just like swimming, going to the beach, something. It's something that we all enjoy and cherish and kind of make it, you know, scary by having something that we, you know, can't see you know, attack people too. That's a lot where the fear of Jaws comes from. That's why, you know, this, you know, a lot of people, you know, don't even want to see Jaws because they're worried about swimming and this stuff too. That's, you know, that, I mean, it's interesting. Some, some places have like outdoor movie showings where you can actually, you know, like float, you know, in like a pond or a pool or something and watch, you know, the film and stuff too. And there's a lot of people that's like, oh, heck no, no way would I watch this this movie and have you know something brush up against my leg that that would be it i'd be done <laughs> yeah and you know the, the thing is this is one of those movies it's like it's like ghostbusters it's it's genre defying um every time this film comes back into theaters for like a you know a, a replay of it i i try and i try and catch it like during the classic replays of it on the big screen because I obviously I wasn't around when it came out in 1975. So I don't get very many chances to view it in that format. So like when Ghostbusters comes out or Wrath of Khan comes, you know, comes and they do a, you know, a retro respective or they go back and they look at it and they let you see it on the big screen at like Celebration Cinema, etc. I go watch it. It's that kind of movie. I love Jaws. I, I love Jaws 2. This is one of my favorite movies. It, it, I Like I said before, I think it is my favorite monster movie. Um, you know, I would say, you know, if you're a teenager, adult, or whatever, I think this is a movie that everyone should probably check it out, even if you're not really into the monster movies. Because it's, you know, taking, like, the monster part out of it, the all the other aspects of this movie are just so well done and stuff, too, that if, if you're a movie fan, this is definitely worth checking out. Can we go home now? <laughs> oh, even man. the little, even the little things. Now I have to explain <laughs> to my wife what I did with her roast. 
<laughs> even the little things. Um, so if you like what we're doing, you like this kind of video, make sure to give us a like, a thumbs up, a subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you want to see more. We have lots of flashback reviews, some newer movie reviews, TV reviews. We're working on some Star Trek The Original Series uh crew movie right now going through the original six keep an eye out for those for now i'm randall here in texas everyone have a great day and i'm matt here in michigan see you guys next time on no market media please consider checking out some of our other videos